here from NYC Mesh. I'm Jillian again, and this is Scott. I'm Scott. Uh, so, and we're, <laughs> we're here to talk about our wireless mesh network in New York City, and especially some of the development we've had over the last year. Um, so I'll begin by talking just about what is NYC Mesh. We're a community-owned and managed uh, wireless network in the city. We actually started, grew out of, I think, a Reddit thread like six years ago or something, and I've really evolved as an organization, particularly over the last two years, to becoming very community center, very focused on providing high-speed, low-cost internet. Um, and the, in New York City, a report that just came out about a month ago uh, showed that about 29% of residents in New York City don't have access to high-speed internet at home. Um, and that number jumped to as high as 55% in many communities. Um, and NYC Mesh is kind of focused on trying to connect everybody who wants to connect. And we have some. Uh, and so here's the, this is just a little talking about, so we encourage everybody who's part of our network to contribute $20 a month if they're able to afford it. Um, I'd say about 60% of our membership contributes that. Um, the other 20% either pay less or nothing at all. Um, these are some of our typical kind of rooftop installations. It really runs the gamut. Um, we <coughs> use predominant, uh, mostly Ubiquity and Microtik products. Um, so we use Omnitex to be able to have create small networks and neighborhoods, and then uh, ubiquity products gen products generally for point to point connections. Um, this kind of talks a little bit about some of our principles at NYC Mesh. We really believe in being accessible to everybody, being neutral, fast for everybody, so that we actually have a network that's usable and people are happy to use it. Most people who are on our network have replaced any kind of commercial internet service provider that they may have, so we're not, we don't think of ourselves as a backup connection for people. We really are the connection for most. Um, resilient, Jillian and I have worked a lot to be able to try, to try to improve resiliency across the network. There's been a lot of interest in that, particularly following Hurricane Sandy in, in New York City. Um, we do a lot of educational programming, which Jillian will talk a little bit about in just a second. And, and then finally, most importantly, it's ours. Um, we are owned by our community. We are run entirely by volunteers and the people in our community. Yeah, so as you mentioned, over the last few years, we've really grown quite quickly. Um, the first node was installed in 2014. And particularly we, uh, with the repeal of net neutrality, we surged a lot. Um, currently, we have about one install a week. And we get a, a day, sorry, and we get about... 10 join requests a day as well at this point. Um, that's due to a lot of the population of New York City, sure, and also a lot of publicity we've had, especially over the last summer, which has been really helpful. Um, and so here's a bit of our map. Um, so we're mostly located in Lower Manhattan and Brooklyn. Uh, as you can see, the dark blue Connect, uh, circles there are our super nodes, and those are connected to the backbone um, through donated bandwidth uh, from either IXPs or uh, one commercial ISP, uh, Pilot Fiber. And then the smaller blue ones are hub nodes, so those actually can share uh, internet access with the community as well as have a public Wi-Fi uh, for those on the street or just uh, you know anyone in a park. Uh, so it's been a really big push to have both of those. And then the red ones are just point to point, so it is where the connection ends. And we're working a lot on expanding those and making those more robust to really expand the network in those areas. And here is, in the gray, is the is showing our join requests. Um, our network is currently about 360 actual nodes installed right now, and we have a uh, kind of rounding it right now because there is such an increase, uh, about 5,000 join requests uh, in the city. So uh, there is definitely a lot of demand for it and a lot of people are interested in it. Uh, and so one thing is our network is a volunteer, entirely based on volunteers. Uh, so that's been a big push is, over the last year, Scott and I have worked a lot on that um, to build a community network, a network of people. And uh, we've, really ramped up the events that we've had. Uh, when we started about a year ago, it was mostly just happy hours uh, once a month. And that was really cool as a way to like 
get to know people in a casual setting, but a lot of people are not necessarily feel welcome in a bar or especially like even when I first walked in as a woman, I did not feel comfortable walking into a bar with a whole bunch of like tech guys. Um, so we have an organizational meeting as well once a month and that breaks out people in the working groups and we really do a big push on leadership roles in a variety of, variety of different areas. I mean, we have a newsletter group, we have um, a design, design group, we have a group that is working on like install pricing and so people can really work on different aspects of the organization and have a real say in it. Um, and then we also do events that are more nonprofit neutral, which kind of brings in the community who might not want to go to a tech event. Uh, for instance, we have a grant writing event, um, even just GitHub training and stuff, and like to organize, like to work on our docs. So we really try to get people to work on a project and be involved uh, from the beginning. And here's just a few photos of our installs. We also do, uh, we have a big install training program. Yeah, I'm, I'm in there a few times. <laughs> uh, we have a really big install training program to get people to become install leaders as well, um, as in addition to group installs that for people who might not want to go into a smaller install, and they can really see uh, a hands-on experience of installing a node, um, installing a hub, and it really gets opens the door to a lot of people. Here's some more photos. Uh, that one in the corner here is like my very first uh, event at NYC Mesh. And so I was just going to talk a little bit about, so all of our members individually own their, their own nodes, and uh, we ask people to be able to try to contribute about $160, which the equipment actually ends up costing roughly about $240, depending on what kind of equipment we're using. But the entire goal of this is that a member owns the entirety of their own install, whether they live in an apartment or larger building. Um, and we obviously have lots of financial assistance that we try to provide to individuals if they can't afford that. Um, so real quick, I was just going to talk a little bit about some of our current projects. We really work with anybody who wants to work with us and is interested in community Wi-Fi. So we work from everybody like a large developer who has 11 buildings across the city that we're actually working on fiber contracts with, where NYC Mesh would actually have a long-term lease on fiber and we could create super nodes on top of some of these larger buildings. Um, here's another example of a development that's ongoing. We were providing Wi-Fi to a construction site. Um, um, we also, obviously, in all these situations, try to create mutually beneficial relationships. And uh, here's one, which is a large node that was on the map you could actually see that supports a lot of our community, which is a large um, NYCHA development, which is the public housing authority in New York City. We provide Wi-Fi to many of the residents and at free of cost, and then we can try to site equipment on top of the roof. Um, Real quick, here's a couple of our other projects. We work in a youth center and elsewhere, but thank you so much. <laughs> Any questions? For one or two questions. <laughs> so um, most of the people that talked around here, they're very interested in building the networks, but really not interested in maintaining them or like running an ISP. How do you like convince people like that kind of stuff is important too? <laughs> Hi. Uh, so we're really definitely not an ISP. We don't adhere by that term. We are not a service provider. We are a community network. Um, support, it's not actually that much work, really. We do have a really active Slack group and channel, so there is always communication going on. Someone can hop in. Um, we would like, as our network expands, to be able to pay someone to do that work because it is a bit of the grunt work, but we do try to distribute it as much as possible um, and teach people how to maintain it themselves. Yeah, we have a, a kind of core group of volunteers that do a lot of the kind of network support. Um, and then all, our, all of our install leaders, so if you're doing the installs, the theory is that you're also expected to support those, those uh, requests, those nodes if there's an issue that's going on. So we try to make kind of neighborhood-centric kind of ownership of the network so that folks uh, are kind of focused on supporting their neighbors and not somebody all the way across town for a support request. Okay, we're gonna Thanks. keep moving. Thank Great. you. Can you give another round of applause to Scott and Jillian?